Hello, welcome to Avanti's LMP Tech Talks. Today we will be discussing the common composition of nucleic acid lipid nanoparticles. Nucleic acids are unable to reach their target cells when directly injected because they're quickly degraded by biological fluids. This is where lipids come in. Formulated into nanoparticles, they play a vital role in protecting nucleic acids and helping them reach their intended destination. The design of lipid nanoparticles to deliver nucleic acids has landed on a common formulation scheme. In addition to the nucleic acid itself, there are four essential components. Cholesterol, a pegylated lipid, a neutral or structural lipid, and a cationic lipid. Let's start with cholesterol. Cholesterol plays an important role in most lipid particle systems, and nucleic acid LMPs are no different. Cholesterol acts as a stability enhancer by filling gaps in the lipid layer, and it has also been shown to assist in transfection. Marketed products currently have a cholesterol content between 35 and 45 percent. Cholesterol must be present to have an effective delivery vesicle, but its ratio is very important as too much cholesterol can prevent particle formation. Along with cholesterol, the neutral lipid adds structure to the particle as it helps form the bilayers. The neutral lipid is a phospholipid and currently all marketed nucleic acid based LMPs contain the same neutral lipid, DSPC. DSPC is often used in other lipid particle systems as well. It is composed of a phosphocholine head group and two saturated 18 carbon fatty acyl chain. DSPC has a transition temperature of about 55 degrees Celsius. This relatively high transition temperature helps prevent premature breakdown of the particle once circulating in the body. Increased circulation time is also improved by the incorporation of pegylated lipids. Peg lipids have an inverted cone shape. The shape promotes increased curvature, which helps create the nanoparticle's small size. Peg groups on pegylated lipids protrude from the particle's outer membrane. These protrusions create steric hindrance that helps prevent aggregation. When determining which pegylated lipid to use in your LMP system, the carbon chain length of the conjugated lipid can be an important consideration. When formulating LMPs, we most commonly use DSPE PEG2000 with 18 carbon chains or DMG PEG2000 with 14 carbon chains. The largest portion of the particle is the cationic lipid, coming in at almost 50% of the total lipid composition. The cationic lipid plays two incredibly important roles. The cationic portion of the lipid interacts with a negative charge on the nucleic acid to form a complex which results in high encapsulation efficiencies within the particle. Then, the cationic lipid aids in the release of the nucleic acid inside the cell cytoplasm. Both cationic lipids and pegylated lipids can be customized for a specific formulation or system. Once formulated, the LMP is injected and can enter the cell by endocytosis. The endosome has an acidic environment below the pKa of the cationic lipid, resulting in protonation. The positive charge promotes electrostatic interactions within the endosomes, believed to be the mechanism by which the nucleic acid is released into the cytoplasm. Now the LMP's job is complete. The lipids are easily eliminated by the body through natural processes. People do amazing things with our lipids. We can't wait to see what you will do.